the star to a place unexpected Would you believe after all we've projected A child in a manger Lowly and small, the weakest of all Unlikeliest hero Wrapped in his mother's shawl Just a child, is this who we've waited for? Cause how many kings stepped down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? we have where the costly are meek because we believe gold for his honor and frankincense for his pleasure and myrrh for the cross he'll suffer do you believe is this who we've waited for way to start our worship this morning. Glad you are joining us online. If you would please remember, click that like button. That way we know that you are watching and it also drives a little extra traffic our way. So we're excited to have seminarian Paul Remfer uh, giving our message today. Uh, He is one of those seminary students that we uh, support. So glad to have him here today uh, on online and also uh, leading worship for us today. Let's get going with our forgiveness song. You said go and sin no more Though my eyes could not meet yours Started running the third time the rooster crowed You threw a party just for me Though I squandered everything I was blinded in the middle of the road I climbed up in a tree to see you Swallowed by the sea to flee you 
sold you for a little silver and a kiss. I killed a man to love his woman, burned a bridge back to your garden. I hung beside you as you took your final breath. You've been loving me since time began. You're behind my every second chance. I love you. I'm trying to love you more. I'm ready. Please help me. You more. I keep thinking there's a limit. Sure, I must be getting near it. When I've used up every pardon and regret. But you promised there is freedom. Gathered up all the broken pieces. Scattered them as far as east is from the west. And you've been loving me since time began. You're behind my every second chance. I love you. I'm trying to love you more. As we turn to our time of confession and forgiveness, indeed we are reminded that we need our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so much. Because oftentimes in this world, we do fail him. We fail to, to be the child that he would have us be. We fail to love our neighbors as ourselves. We fail to reflect his love in this lost and broken world. So when we come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of course we bow down just like the wise men bowed down. We bow down and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, acknowledging that we do fail him miserably at times. But we seek him because we know that in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have new life, we have forgiveness. So let's just pause a moment and reflect anything that's heavy on our hearts. Let's turn that over at the foot of Jesus' cross to be reminded of his love and care for us and to trust in Him to guide and direct us as we live our lives for Him. We pause a moment and reflect. And hear the good news of our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has sent His Son Jesus to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all of our sin. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With all the sand that fills the hourglass, with every breath between my first and last, I love you. Our epistle lesson and also the basis for our message this morning is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, 
we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us that, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to the custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Glad you are joining us for our children's chapel. So I don't know if you heard that gospel message or not, uh, but it's kind of a fun story because Jesus and his family would travel to Jerusalem to worship God every single year. And then this year was a special year for Jesus because it was the first time that he would be able to go and listen to those that taught about God's word. And so he could go in and listen to them and ask them questions if he wanted. And so Jesus was really excited that he was getting that opportunity. That's kind of a fun thing that we can remember too, to remember that Jesus really wanted to learn as much as he could about the Bible. And that's what we want to be able to do too, to make sure that we're learning as much as we can about God's word. Because in God's word, it tells us how much he loves us and how much he cares for us that he died on the cross for our sins so that we could go to heaven and that one day he's coming again too. So Jesus was in the temple and he was listening to God's word and he was asking all kinds of questions that he has. And that's a good thing. You can always ask the questions that you have too. So when Mary and Joseph went back and they, fig- and they realized that Jesus wasn't with them anymore, they came back to Jerusalem and they were looking all over for him because they thought, Jesus was lost. When they found Jesus, he was there at the church. He was in the temple, still learning about God's word. And when they asked Jesus where he was, he simply said, didn't you know I needed to be in my father's house to be learning about God's word? See, this was the first time that he could go in and he couldn't get enough of God's word. He wanted to learn everything that he could about his father's teaching. So let's pray about that. Thank God for his word and help us to always be in his word. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for your Bible that teaches me all about your love. Help me every day to read your word so that I can grow 
just like Jesus. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There are four words no child likes to hear. These four words are usually spoken by a parent or someone else in authority over them. You've probably heard them or maybe even used them yourself. What four words am I referring to? They're words all of us listening online or gathered together in the sanctuary know. Because I said so. Now, oftentimes children don't want to hear these words, and for that reason, they can have a bit of a negative connotation with them. However, as God's children, when we use these words, it's great news for us. When God says, because I said so, it has the most positive meaning and outcome for us. Now, there are four words from our text in Romans today that I'd like to unpack with you. The first word we're going to look at is justified. Because God said so, we are justified by faith in Christ. By a show of hands, how many of you are righteous on your own? Go ahead, take a look around with those you're gathered with. That's right, there's no hands raised. No matter how hard we try, we all know that we cannot live a righteous life. All we can do is live in an unrighteous manner. There's a confession that we often use when we're making confession of our sins, and in this confession, we say these words, By nature we are sinful and unclean, and have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By nature, we rely on ourselves, and we put ourselves first. Humanity has been that way since the fall into sin. We don't even need the world's encouragement to put ourselves first, but it offers it anyway. Don't believe me? All you have to do is Google it, and there will be plenty of articles telling you that you should put yourself first instead of others. But when we live like this, in this pull-yourself-up-by-your-own-bootstraps mentality, we are separated from God. When we look at our lives in the mirror of God's law, we know that what we deserve is condemnation. We haven't kept the commandments perfectly or even come close. I'd like you to ponder this question for a second. What is your biggest fear right now? Is that fear bigger than your fear, love, and trust in God? Kids, have you listened to your parents and your teachers like you should before they had to use the words, because I said so? Have you any of you gossiped lately because it's just so easy to talk about that person behind their back? Yeah, you and I, we all know that based on our own merit, we stand guilty before God. No way can we honestly look in the mirror and say, I'm just. Again, thinking about our confession, we say it right there. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. What we deserve to hear God say is, because I said so, as he sends us into eternal fire. But instead, we hear different words. In his mercy, God says, you're justified. Do you know what the word justified means? It means to be declared righteous. Or when I'm explaining it in a confirmation class, I say it this way. Justified means just as if I'd never sinned. It means that you are declared not guilty. Why? Because God said so. But how can that be? Take a look at verse 6 with me, if you would. It says, For while, while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly. That's me, and that's you. 
Jesus went to the cross and paid the price for our sin, for the sins of the whole world. And God counts that for you, so you are justified because God said so. The second word for us to unpack here this morning is the word faith. We are justified by faith. Taking a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, you see this. Faith is believing in things unseen and trusting that they are true, even when they don't look the way God said. God says we are justified, but we still don't look that way to ourselves or to anybody else. Our sinful nature still shows its ugly head. And our sinful nature also still believes that we have to straighten things out to get ourselves right, get our act together, to be just before God. And we often think we can do that, that we'll be okay because of what we do. We're okay because we're better than most people. But when we look at our verse for today, we see what faith does. Faith is believing that we really are justified because God said so. And he has said exactly that. He said, you are not guilty. You are right with me. And those who don't believe this, who still think that they have to do something to get themselves right with God, or think that they already have done something, will only get the eternal fruits of what they count on their own unrighteous, sinful, failing best. But those in faith, given through baptism, have what God says they have, right standing with Him now and forever. Why? Because He said so. Because God said so. Word number three for today, we have peace with Him. Peace is another thing that we can't always see or feel. We know how elusive peace is in this world. It seems there is always war of some sort going on in our world. One hot spot cools off and war breaks out somewhere else. Or let's talk about peace a little more personally. We all want to feel at peace, but that peaceful feeling really never seems to last. We want to be at peace about our college decision or career choice, a family move, or a big investment decision, but something inside just keeps raising nagging questions. Or maybe we want peace of mind that we've been fair, kind, and loving to our family and friends, and that they love us because we're not sure if they're over that hurt that we've caused them. Or maybe it's our relationship with God. We want to be sure God really isn't angry over our sins, but our consciences accuse us. Do we really have peace with God? So where do we turn for peace? We don't look to ourselves, we turn to God. God says through Paul in our text this morning, you have peace with me through Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? God said so. Here again, some of the greatest words in the Bible. God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The whole point of Jesus' cross was reconciliation, peace between God and man. Sin separated us from God, made us God's enemies, helpless. Our sin was like a brick wall. There's nothing you or I could do to move a brick wall or get through it. But because of Christ, that wall is no longer between us and God. Because of Christ, that wall of sin was removed, as Jesus took our sins upon himself, and then took them to the cross and got rid of them forever. Nothing can separate us from God any longer. We may not always feel at peace, but that's not what matters. What matters is that God is at peace with us. 
he said so. Because God said so, word number four for today, we have great hope. When a person trusts in what God has said, God gives that person not just the greatest need of this life, but one for the life to come as well. Hope. It's a fact that life on this planet is not always easy for us. Exhibit A, which we have been dealing with all of 2020, but that even continues into this new year, is the coronavirus. But even when there isn't a pandemic like this, life still has its challenges. What challenges do you have in life right now? How do you deal with them? If met with doubt in God's goodness and promise, or bitterness toward others, or despair, and even resignation, sufferings can bring spiritual defeat. But if met with the attitude of confidence and rejoicing that Paul encourages here in our text this morning, these sufferings will produce the valuable spiritual qualities that Paul lists in verses 3 through 5. Know that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So how can you deal with the things that go on in this life? You can deal with them, with everything, because God has given you a great hope for your future, in this life and in the one to come. The hope God has given us for what's ahead changes our perspective as we endure sorrow, suffering, and pain in this life. Later in Romans, Paul writes, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Hope. Hope is not a by-and-by thing. It is a certain hope that is grounded in faith. Again, from verse 5, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. The hope that Paul speaks of here isn't like the hope that we often speak of. Like, for example, I hope the Chiefs win the Super Bowl again this year. Hope is what we have for the life to come. When Paul says we have hope, it's a sure thing, a certain thing. How can we be sure that it's so certain? Because God said so. Usually, we talked about at the beginning, when a parent says to their children, because I said so, a child probably doesn't want to hear them. But as God's children... These words have a different feel for us. They are words we enjoy hearing. God uses the words to reassure us what He has done and continues to do for us because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And the four words that we looked at together today remind us of this truth. We are justified by faith, and that gives us peace with God and hope for what is to come. How can we be so certain? Because God said so. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving, and we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue His kingdom work among us. Our announcements for today, including the undecorating of Christmas here at St. Stephen's. So we are 
planning to do that on January 10th, again, after the 1030 service. Uh, we need lots of help. That way the task goes quickly. And again, for reserving your lunch, for sticking around and helping, there is a link for that in your Team Jesus News. Or if you would like to just call the church office and let us know you plan to do that, we'll make sure you have food available. And then also, St. Stephen is hosting a blood drive, and that's on January 26th, uh, 3 to 7 p.m. Book your appointment if you'd like. Uh, links to that are online, or you could call the Community Blood Center and let them know that you plan to donate here at St. Stephen and they will get you signed up. I'm so confused I know I heard you loud and clear So I follow through Somehow I ended up here I don't want to think I may never understand That my broken heart is a part of your plan When I try to pray All I get is hurt And these four words Thy will by the noise just try to make sense of all your promises sometimes I gotta stop remember that you're good and I give you thanks for the gift of your son our savior for you came to meet us where we needed to be met Lord we know that there is so much in our life that, that is leading us away from you and distracting us from following you we pray Lord that you would just continue to be with us directing us send your spirit into our lives each and every day so that we do not lose focus on you the author and perfecter of our faith Lord we pray that you would keep us away from the evil one that you would let him have no power over us Surround us with your grace. Surround us with your protection. For we know that it is in you alone that we find our help. Lord, all that it is that is heavy on our hearts in prayer, we lift that to you because we know that you hear us, that you love us, and that you do want what's best for us. Lord, guide and direct and keep us safely in your care until we face that day where we see you face to face. For your sake, we would love to hear, well done, 
good and faithful servant. We ask this for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Another city up in flames, another life is lost in vain. Another gunshot echoes, will it ever change? Oh, everyone's got someone to blame for the hurt and the fear and the hate. But in the dark and the madness, we will pray. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Everybody's drawing lines, shouting up. Choosing sides, searching for the truth in the midst of all these lies. What would it take to finally see peace in the face of tragedy? Nothing on earth can give us what we really need. Oh, heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down and evade the earth. Wake up your sleeping church. Through all this pain and hurt, we won't stop praying. Heaven come down, have your way. No lie, no money, care else can save us now. Heaven come down, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Another city up in flames Another life is lost in vain Another gunshot echoes